Are you a small business owner struggling to nail down your brand voice? Have you hired copywriters only to discover they couldn't capture your messaging? If that sounds like you, then you need to download my free resource, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps. Once you complete these simple steps, you will have a solid foundation for producing your business copy, whether you decide to write your own content or outsource it to a professional, like say me. As an added bonus, you'll be automatically subscribed to my email list where you can learn more about my writing services and receive weekly updates about my podcast, Emotional Abuse is Real. Head over to the link in the show notes to grab Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps today. Trigger warning, this podcast episode features discussions of emotional abuse and predatory behavior in multi-level marketing companies. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Emotional Abuse is Real. I'm your host, Serene Leeds. I'm a professional writer and storyteller, and I'm so glad you're here. On today's episode, I'm wrapping up my series dedicated to multi-level marketing companies and toxic health and wellness groups. While I don't have a guest joining me, I will be narrating an anonymous listener's account of the time she spent in an MLM. It's a cautionary tale, no doubt, but for her sake, I'm so happy she came out of the experience relatively unscathed and that she was willing to share her story with all of you. I just want to take this moment to say how grateful I am to all of the guests who appeared on the podcast to chat about the harm that can come from joining MLMs and other toxic health and wellness groups. As I said at the outset, I've been fascinated with MLMs and their sketchy business model for several years now, and I'm so glad this podcast allowed me to raise some awareness about the topic. But as always, before we get into the episode, I have a few quick announcements. Please make sure you're following me on Instagram at Serene Leads Rights. That's S A R E N E L E E D S W R I T E S. And that you're subscribed to this podcast on either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Also, don't forget to support Emotional Abuse is Real by leaving a five star rating and by writing a review over on Apple Podcasts. Finally, I know I haven't mentioned this in a while, but Emotional Abuse is Real still has a Buy Me a Coffee page, and donations are always welcome. A reminder that this podcast is a one-woman operation, and your donations help support the podcast's production costs. If you're interested in sharing your emotional abuse experience on this podcast, please either DM me on Instagram, email me at hello at sereneleadsrights.com, or fill out my quick and simple application form. I've left links to my Instagram, email, the show's application form, the Buy Me a Coffee page, and my free download, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps, in the show notes. So as I previously mentioned, today I'll be narrating the story of a former MLMer. For the sake of her privacy, I'm going to refer to her as Nella. Joining an MLM seemed an almost natural progression for Nella after she grew up around Avon and Tupperware parties. But like so many others before her, Nella eventually woke up to the business's predatory recruiting and pressure-filled tactics. Anyway, without further ado... Here's Nella's MLM story. I grew up around MLM and direct sales companies. I recall attending parties and even my parents hosting a few. Everything from Avon, Tupperware, and Pampered Chef to Beauty Control and Party Light. These always seem fun, and I noticed the host was generally well-rewarded for a good turnout. I don't recall witnessing recruiting tactics at these events throughout my childhood. The first time I was presented with an MLM opportunity was after I'd gotten engaged. It was a skincare company, and as someone who struggled with acne issues since puberty, I knew I could sing a product's praises to the moon if it helped my skin. 
The rep I initially connected with brought her upline into our conversation almost immediately. During a brief coffee meeting, they asked me lots of questions, digging into my dreams and goals and desires. Naturally, my initial hope was to heal my skin so I could confidently walk down the aisle and not be dealing with breakouts on my wedding day. They assured me their acne line could help, then asked what I did for work, was it something, and was it something I saw myself doing forever? Now, I had just graduated college a few years prior and was pretty set on my career. However, the idea of extra income is always appealing, so I let them know that. Then they started pivoting to their business opportunity, that if I'm looking to try the product, the best route to get started is actually with a business starter kit, because I get the deepest discount on the products this way, and I can also earn money on any product I sell or other consultants that I help launch. After spending thousands of dollars on dermatologist visits with little to no results, I saw this as a great opportunity. I jumped in with the business starter product kit they suggested. Within two to three months, I had a pretty miraculous product transformation. I was able to go foundation free from my wedding, which was a huge win. I was easily able and willing to share the product because it really changed my skin. Within a few months, I had several customers and even a few consultants on my team. I was attending local meetings hosted by my upline and tapping into corporate trainings as well. As my passion for this company and business grew, my enthusiasm for my nine to five job was waning. Here I was in an entry level job working 40 plus hours a week, making $40,000 a year. And my upline sponsor makes that in a month, only working 10 to 20 hours a week. I wanted that too. I decided I would be coachable and do whatever it takes to build my own success story so I could earn my annual salary in a month. My sponsor was elated, and she said she was committed to matching my efforts. She gave me a list of things we could do to expand my business, host a launch party in my home, ask friends to host launch parties, host a virtual launch party, ask friends to host virtual launch parties. Use social media to start conversations about the business. I did all of these things. Within four to five months, I'd earned my business kit investment back and was now making some money, around $100 to $200 a month, which was better than nothing, of course. One thing I noticed, however, is they always wanted you to spend $100 a month in their Consultant Replenishment Program, or CRP, so you could earn team commissions. In other words, you always earn commissions on product you sell, whether you enroll in the $100 replenishment program or not. But if you're building a team, you have to spend $100 per month on product in order to earn commissions on team sales. I was building a team, so of course I reinvested that money back into product for myself, sampling or gifting. At least it's a tax write-off. For a while, my business was growing. At one point, I had 20 or so consultants on my team and 30 to 40 customers. And I was thrilled. I went to conventions. I earned a few team trips and incentives. I even left that entry-level job and started a freelance business so I could have some more time to put towards my turnkey business in a box, as they often coin it. My sponsor was one of the founding consultants of the company, so this was her full-time thing. She told me to always have business cards and samples on hand so you can, quote, prospect anywhere. This means the grocery store, the gym, anything like that. Because in her words, prospective consultants are everywhere. I was encouraged to, quote, always lead with the business because you can always fall back on the product. For me, however, this was against my nature. I became passionate about the company because of the product, so I was compelled to lead with the product and bring up the business when it made sense. I remember my sponsor saying, quote, that's not the best way to approach this. And that's when I started sensing some manipulative practices that I wasn't fond of. If this is my business, I should be able to grow it how I want within reason as long as I'm staying compliant with the company's policies and procedures. 
Speaking of policies, I was so excited about my business that I created a short video and uploaded it to YouTube. Over the course of three to four minutes, I shared about my skin issues and how these products improved my skin, inviting viewers to take a short quiz for a product recommendation and pointing them to my company-created website for more details. Within a week, my sponsor's sponsor contacted me saying the corporate office asked that I remove the video from YouTube or my consultant account could be terminated. I immediately complied, but I was devastated. Apparently, posting videos using the company's name was against policies and procedures, and I didn't realize it. Now I was hesitant to put anything out on social media. Shortly after this incident is when I started noticing the heavier focus on recruitment and preying on people's circumstances to get them to buy into the business. What was sold to me as a, quote, laptop lifestyle, working in the fringe hours when you want, how you want, with whomever you want, had turned into an anxiety-inducing, round-the-clock job focused on talking to as many people as possible about the business every day. It became all about numbers, numbers, numbers. How many people have you talked with this week? How many business presentations have you done? How many samples have you shared? How many events have you attended? It became utterly exhausting and affected my freelance work, where I was just too drained to work on either business. And I was newly married at this point, so this had put another strain on our finances. I had to put myself out there for another job. Thankfully, within a month or so, I landed a well-paying, great position, so the pressure to produce was somewhat alleviated. As much as I wanted to reignite my passion for the business, that burning desire never really returned. Attending conventions, participating in corporate calls, and going to team events made me realize the predatory nature of these companies. You're often coached to inquire about people's goals and dreams and desires, asking them, how would it feel to achieve those? What if there was a business you could work alongside your job that could ultimately help you achieve those dreams and goals and desires? I felt weird asking people those questions when the business wasn't doing that for me. And sure, all that sounds great, but what they don't tell you is how non-stop the business is and how always on you have to be. Now, some people have had wonderful successes and changed their family's future in really positive ways with this business model. For most people, however, the success just isn't sustainable. What's touted as a super part-time fringe hours business just isn't true. You're coached to prospect everywhere, always buy the new product, and always be recruiting. It got to the point where I just wasn't willing to sacrifice any more time or energy towards something that had so little return. I still have an account with the company, as there are a few products I consistently use. I have a few active team members and clients who reach out every now and then with a question, and I do my best to help them or point them toward the company's customer service. I haven't attended a convention in six to seven years, nor have I attended any team events in that time period either. I don't plan to attend any in the future. I don't regret the time I spent as an active consultant with this company. However, I'm so much happier focusing on my own projects and leaving that company behind. To anyone considering joining an MLM, know that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Always be diligent and do your research. These companies thrive on using your goals and dreams and desires against you. But there are a number of other ways you can have a flexible, rewarding career from home, whether it's through freelance or remote work opportunities. A resource I recommend for anyone thinking about joining an MLM is the Anti-MLM Coalition. Thank you for listening to Nella's story on Emotional Abuse is Real. If you are interested in checking out the Anti-MLM Coalition, I've left the link to their website in the show notes. 
That concludes the podcast's dedicated series on MLMs and toxic health and wellness groups. But I'm continuing to welcome guests looking to discuss all kinds of emotional abuse well into fall 2024. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please reach out via email at hello at sereneleadsrights.com, through Instagram at sereneleadsrights, or fill out my guest application form. Please note that this podcast should not be used as a substitute for professional mental health services. If you are a victim of emotional abuse and need help, please call or text the Suicide and Crisis Hotline at 988 or call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also text START, S-T-A-R-T, to 88788. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Instagram, consider buying me a coffee, and go grab my free download, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.